All right, we are on. Yay! Hey, Kelly. Yay! All right. Hey, so we are with Kelly from Feather Connections Homestead. Kelly, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm Kelly from Feather Connections. We're in central Utah. Um, we homestead in a very small backyard. She doesn't have a lot of people with yards. Um, and so we live in my in-laws basement and we have two kids and our backyard is maybe a tenth of an acre and we have lots of quail. To us, a lot is like two, three hundred. Um, I mean, that's a good amount. Yeah, it was like for us, it works like and we're just cycling them out because we don't have a lot of room to put them. And then we have yeah. some chickens and yeah. And do you garden at all? A little bit. I'm going to try to focus on it more this year. We're going to have to do a lot of like vertical, um, trying to get things to go up because anything yep. that goes down, the chickens free range and snatch. And so they get a hold of a lot of the blackberries. And I think if I can make it go more vertical, they have less places to hide their eggs too. Yeah. Because that's always fun going through the blackberries, trying to find eggs. and. Yeah. yeah. Vertical gardening. We do a lot of that here too. So I, I get that. Um, how'd you get into mostly quail raising? I know you do homesteading, but I know your concentration is quail. How'd you get into it? We, so I kind of always wanted to be a, like a farmer, <laughs> but I live in the city. So I'm bound by city rules and stuff. And I grew up in 4-H, so I love that kind of and then COVID happened. And I think this is honestly, I've heard a lot of people say this in the quail community and just in the homesteading prepping in general, when COVID happened, I think it made a lot of people um, kind of think about stuff and question a lot of things and want to go back to like their roots and back to the basics and grow their right. own stuff. And so because of that, I was able to convince my father-in-law to let me have some chickens in the backyard that he had never wanted. <laughs> and so we got some chickens. And then as I was researching chickens, I found out about Caternix quail. And so then I started telling my husband about it. And he was like, we should get some quail. And a local guy, like, I wanted to try the meat eggs first. Mm -hmm. And a local guy let us come to his house. And, like, we wore masks and everything. And he, like, was doing a big butcher day to process a bunch of his nails. And he, for free, let us, like, taught us how to process the quail and then we took home the meat and the eggs and we learned that even though we're both like super city and we, we don't hunt or anything like that, um, that we could process something for meat. Um, right. And I think a lot of the people we end up teaching, because now we teach free classes to butcher anytime anybody wants to know, we'll just mm -hmm. like be like set up a time, come over and we just show them. It takes like five minutes to teach somebody. Right. Um, so... I like literally lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, do what? I said, you're teaching people. Yeah, we just teach people for free. And oh, that's what I was going to say. A lot of, I've noticed a lot of the people we teach, like more than half the people we teach are younger women with younger kids. And I think um, a lot of women are kind of getting into the space and it's something that they do when their husband's at work and they're taking care of the kids or whatever. And I think you realize when you're faced with like hard times, like um, with all the food shortages and everything that happened during the pandemic, um, a lot of people realize their strength by doing things like raising animals for meat and stuff like that and kind of went a different direction than they ever thought possible. So we teach a lot of people that also are very city and don't know if they can process anything for meat. And then they come to us and we kind of like, well, this is where we started. Here's what we're doing now. And just kind of walk them through, give them tours and kind of help everybody get started kind of how we were. Right. So really the pandemic pushed us that way. Launched it. Yeah. And Which is great for me because I wanted to go that way. So I was like, hey. yeah. And y'all have a lot of rules in the city that you're in. Right. Yeah. So yeah. something small and non-intrusive is probably the way to go. Yeah. The way, because of the laws and the rules that we have I have to get creative on some things. Like I don't grow as many males out for meat. I usually only grow out the biggest males for my breeding pens. And then I usually process any extra males at like three or four weeks for falconers so that there's a lot less noise because the roosters, okay. when you have like a hundred or 200 you're growing out can get really yeah. loud. And that's when the neighbors complain and ordinances are mainly enforced based on complaints so yeah, as long as you keep the neighbors happy um 
then you can do a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I know we kind of touched on it that quail are your current concentration. That's mostly what you do. Um, do you do any kind of type of prepping at all? I know personally we've talked about it that you do a little bit. We've kind of had that conversation before. Yeah. So my is the reason it works so well living with my in-laws is that my father-in-law has always been a big prepper. Like he's okay. like ham radios, like he's super, super prepared. And my mother-in-law has always been really good at like canning and preserving food. And okay. I'm really good at like livestock type stuff. Right. And my husband's really good at more like technical things. Um, and so it, we kind of all share the skills and kind of intermix stuff. Like my in-laws helped me a lot learning to can. I'm really, really scared of the pressure canner. So this year I want to like, and we don't have an electric one because I looked. <laughs> but um, so she's kind of helping me with that and the preservation stuff. And she's getting up in age. So I'm going to try this right. year to help more with gardening and try to get the kids involved since they have so much energy. <laughs> um so, yeah, we kind of all just share different things. So we all just kind of combine it all into one big prepared yeah. bubble. That but I would say that. she's more of a canner. He's more of a prepper. And I'm more of like homesteader. Right. I don't know it's what good. you call it. If it's as small as we are, like a, a yard stead. <laughs> a home, no, I think a, a homestead prayer. is anything. You at your home. It's a homestead. It's, <laughs> it's, whatever, it's whatever you make it. That's, that's <laughs> There's a lot of definitions for that. <laughs> so what is the favorite thing about what you do? What, what's your uh, favorite part? I, I mean, I love hatching baby chicks because like it doesn't ever really get old. Like it, it's really fun. But I think honestly teaching people because I think watching people that are super, super city like we were um, learn a skill they never thought they could do and watch that shift in that like paradigm shift just in their minds and in their lives of like, Oh, I can, I can take care of myself and I right. don't need to depend on anybody else. Like I can take care of my family in mm -hmm. like a non-traditional way, I think is really, really rewarding, which is often why we don't usually charge people. We just charge them if they want to like take the meat home. Right. Like, and people just come hang out and they learn. And like, we've done it before where it's like five hours where people come and they just, Oh, wow. And it's, and it's just because we're like talking to people and realizing stuff people have gone through and like connecting on like just a more, how can we help you feel like you're more prepared kind of level. Right. And sometimes people don't buy from us at all. Sometimes people just show up and learn a new skill. And even if we don't monetarily benefit from it at all, I think the more people can like learn and like, find that inner strength to do like hard things, the better off like society as a whole is going to be. Right. So we just, because someone was willing to do that for us, we just do that for someone else. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's like you said, I think the pandemic uh, made for a big shift in most people's mindset when it came to growing food. I mean, we've been doing it for a long time, but I think more people really got into it mm -hmm. and I see it. I see it even still. There's like a big boom in people that want yeah. to raise their own meat or grow their own gardens or it's still, it's still doing this. Yeah. And not like other stuff that, Oh, I don't know. A lot of people are learning to bake bread again. I saw. I, 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 I killed my sourdough. I need to get some more for my neighbor and I don't know how to make the bread. Yeah, I kill my sourdough starter on the regular, so it's fine. I know, I'm like, you could make more. So I'm like, but my neighbor's got some really good stuff. I've just never made bread. I've made other stuff with it, but. I made plenty, and then I moved on to the next thing and killed it, and Aaron always wants me to restart another one, but I'm like, eventually, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. I have other you know, I'm like, I need to put it in, like, the fridge so it lasts longer, and then I don't, and I'm like, oh. That's so. what I do, too. I forget to put it in the fridge, so then it just sits there. And mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It gets buried under all the eggs, right? I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure that doesn't happen at your house at all. <laughs> no, never. There would never be so many eggs here that we wouldn't know what to do with. <laughs> Where'd Lane go? <laughs> poor, poor Lane. We always have to like clear off a seat for somebody. It's okay. That's what it's my okay. kitchen looks like. In too. spring, in spring, we'll be shipping otters, and we won't have as many here. We're just hatching breeders right now. So, um, 
if you were starting all over again from the beginning, is there anything that you would do differently? Um, I don't think we would do anything. I asked my husband if he thought this too. And he was like, no, I think we went about it in the way that was like best for us at the time. I think I see a lot of people. I think I would change a lot about how other people start. <laughs> like I see people that like see stuff like my Shire farm and my Shire farm has like a whole quail for profit playlist and a quail for profit Facebook group. And like, honestly helps people for free all the time, start a quail business, but they right. see something like that. And they think they can go from, well, I raised a lot of chickens, so I'm good to yeah. my Shire. And there is so much. It's a lot different. My Shire is years and years and years of research and trial and error. And you are not going to like, so I think um, it, it's helped us to, I think if you always start taking care of your family first, Mm -hmm. And then you'll grow your market because people will see you're doing right. and then they want to try the eggs. Right. And then we started that way. And then we're like, oh, can we buy eggs from you? So we got, we hatched some more birds so that we had more breeders and we would sell the extra eggs. And then right. people were like, can you hatch chicks for us? So we started hatching chicks for other people. And right. then like not long after that, it was to the point where we had like a waiting list that was like months long and right. we brewed chicks in our living room and we have a one bedroom apartment in the basement. So it's, it's a lot of chicks all over the place. Um, but I think we kind of grew with our market and like this right. year, like, I think that's a smart way to do it. Yeah. I think people try to go too big, too fast and then they burn out and you'll burn out doing that with anything, but exactly. with homesteading, it's like, it's not a race. It's like progressive. So yes. We had to start where you're at and then slowly add more so that you don't like get overwhelmed. Right. Yeah. Cause we were talking about that the other night. Cause it'll be our third year at this property. And that's what I told him. I think next year I'm probably lying to myself, but I think next year we won't have any giant projects mm -hmm. like brooding areas done. We want to redo our beds, but that's not a huge project. We had that built before we even had our boxes unpacked when we moved here. <laughs> like the greenhouse is built, so that's done. You know, yeah. the, the infrastructure, the major stuff is done. So I'm hoping it'll be a little more relaxing. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like you said, it's, it's just a little bit at a time, not yeah. everything all at once. And it lot. can get really overwhelming when you don't oh, know God, yeah. anything at all. It's like, where do I freaking start? Like yeah. I'm reading like a couple gardening books now because I just feel like I'm going to start all these plants. They're not going to be big enough. I don't know how to prune them. And then the squash bugs come in and decimate bugs. everything. Yeah. And it's like, I did all that work for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so but there's always a lesson, even in the stuff that gets messed right. up or eaten by the squash bugs. There's always a lesson and right. plants try to grow. So it'll be okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> That's the one thing I learned in gardening. If it doesn't work out, there's always next year. It'll be fine. It's, I think I'm you know. glad I started with quail because, um, like, I can always be like, well, I'm doing really good at the quail. <laughs> like, there's always, yeah, like, if you have that one thing that you're really good at, you yeah. can suck at everything else, even if it's not a homesteading thing. You can just be like, yeah. I'm really good at watching reality TV. And if you have a really bad day and the squash bugs eat your entire garden, which happens a lot matter. in Utah, you can be like, I'm real good at watching reality TV. I'm going to go do that for a minute. <laughs> nope. I totally get it. I totally, totally understand. Let's see. Um, And do you have, we kind of might have touched on that, but do you have any advice for somebody who's just getting started besides going slowly into it? since we just kind of touched on that. Yeah, I think as long as you're like, if you're striving for progress, not perfection, and you just keep putting one foot in front of the other, that you'll get where you want to go. Like, and as long as you're making forward progress, it's okay. It's progress. Yep, and yep. I, um, I heard something the other day and I thought it was in like a workout video, but it was super applicable just to life in general. But it said, failure is just new information. And I was like, oh, that's really true, especially with, like is, homesteading. Like you fail, you might fail and kill like everything in your incubator, which I have actually done recently. That um, happened. It happened. <laughs> so I my birthday. I was so mad. <laughs> that was your guys' eggs. I was so sad. I killed all my salad. <laughs> that was a like, happy birthday to me. <laughs> that's why you cry a little bit. Up thermometers you in your phone to let you yes. know. <laughs> um, but. 
Yeah, I, I think it's just new information, right? New information yeah. was uh, program your Govi to your phone to alert you that that doesn't happen. <laughs> so, um, and I we've think all, we've been there too with the incubator <laughs> spikes or the power outages or the, yeah, there's yeah. always, we've been really lucky with power outages. Like we haven't had too many and, mm -hmm. and not for too long. So like, right. thank goodness we're not in an area that has that because that would be rough. <laughs> like at least yeah. the chicks and stuff, if they're in the house, they'll still be warmer than if they were like outside and the power went out. Right. Right. But, yeah. That um, was our biggest fear during this cold that we would lose power and everybody would just freeze because we brewed everybody outside. <laughs> Yeah, I was worried about your silkies. I was <laughs> like, what the silkies? <laughs> if we lose power to the brooders, we're in trouble outside because no. Mm -mm. Yeah. We're not the cold, we're not made for this weather. But it's I know, I like, feel so bad for you guys. I'm like, like we're 60, kind of used to it. 68 is the high today, something like that. I'm like, so but it's, it's done, be, though. The cold snap is done. No, no. It's going to be 20 degrees tomorrow night. Oh, no. I'm like, Dang it. I'm like this, is, this is not acceptable. Just <laughs> get it all done at one time. I don't. Mm -mm. Yeah. All right. That's... So I have your social media pulled up. I don't have your TikTok on here because it's on the lap. It's, I'm on the laptop and I'll follow you on TikTok on my phone. Oh, yeah. I do. I me... do it on my phone, too. Let me pull up this if I can. I don't know if my TikTok is linked to my website, but honestly, if people can find my other socials, they know then they'll know how to spell the last name. If I disappear, the tricky first, part is spelling the last name. Connect is my last name, so connections. <laughs> A lot no. of people are like really confused by the last part. If you can figure out how to spell connect, then <laughs> connections is easy, and then you can find me a lot of places. Yeah, it took it took me a, a little minute to remember how to spell your last name, but I got oh, it. Well, people still ship me eggs that have shipped me or random things and spell connect in the most creative way. There's one person and I love him dearly, but he has sent me things all the time and my name is spelled different every single time. <laughs> They're like making best guess whenever it comes to spelling. Right. Okay. Let's see. Here we go. Here is your YouTube channel. I'm going to come over here and scroll through it a little bit just so we can see. You post a lot of funny stuff. Because <laughs> if you don't know Kelly, she is hilarious. I Honestly, <laughs> my Shire advice when I was asking him, I was like, I want to grow my YouTube, but I don't know what to post because I feel like everybody knows so much more than me. And I don't want to like you know, reinvent the wheel a million times. And he was like, I think you should just post funny stuff because yeah. you're really good at that. So I do yeah. post educational stuff, but then I also just, I don't try to be funny. I think that's just like, that's just, I'm just I just don't take anything too seriously. And like, so I just say random things. So it well, is. I feel, I feel like you going with the funny is the best thing you can do because that's your personality. So let's see let me get this one off can you hear that and let me i hope that's not picking that up i can hear it a little bit it's not much well, it's like my kids are upset because they realize i locked the bedroom door <laughs> so they think they're locked in and oh, no. out so <laughs> we're having many meltdowns throughout the house <laughs> Let's see. Well, we're almost done. That way you can go get to them because I know that uh, they are. Let's see. This is what I was talking about. The um, our, our guinea pig era on here. We'll figure it out. I know. And then you can teach me because I'm like, I, I did program some stuff on StreamYard, but if I don't use it, it doesn't matter. Then. Okay. So here's the website. Let's I'm like, it. it is? Oh, I changed it. I forgot I changed it. It looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. Are you surprised? Yeah, I like forgot I changed it. And I thought for a second it was my blog because my blog's on a different one. So if you click on blog, it goes different. If you click on, um, here. Yeah. if you click on like merge, it goes somewhere different. And then you do the hatchet home program. 
Yep. That. So if somebody wants to do that, they can contact you through the website. Yeah, and I I think my number is like plastered all over there too. I probably so. People try to call me. I usually don't answer because I get so much like I swear every new spam oh yeah thing there you that are. comes out, I get it. But yeah, then, those, those are chicken chicks. I don't think most people will realize that or it matters. They can do it with chickens too. If they get fertile chicken eggs, I just am not allowed to have a rooster because right. I'm already pushing it with what I'm allowed. <laughs> and then let's see if you have pictures. You do have pictures of some of the quail crafts that you yeah, offer. Some of it. I need to post more pictures of the feather earrings. Um, I have to do the same too. I just haven't done it yet. It's okay. Yeah, because I'm like, they all look so different and stuff. So, and then I need to post more pictures of like the quail claw necklaces and stuff. But all the right. quail and claw then, necklaces and the feather earrings are not really unique to me because I know you guys do that. Like, you've done tutorials on how to do it. You're much better at doing it than me. Um, it, the egg earrings, though, I'm, I think so far, one of the only ones that like does these. Yeah, I but think so too. Of course, should be available soon on Quail U, so then everybody can learn how to do it. Let's see. And okay, make sure I'm pulling up the correct screen. I don't think I have anything crazy. Um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, it's my Facebook page. I was like, "What's this?" <laughs> yeah, I connected my Instagram on my Facebook, so usually it's our postables. If I remember, you'll post to Instagram too through Facebook. Yeah, I just next. Yeah, I think I'll follow you on Instagram. I have to double check. But yeah. <laughs> if anybody gets time, go watch this one. <laughs> this might be, that might be my favorite video so far. I feel like I should like address that just in case people are wondering. <laughs> like, I'm just going to, because I get a lot of flack for the quail claw stuff. We, yeah, like many other people, we just don't waste. If you process an animal, we don't waste the rest of it. So, like, right. I use the skulls and the wings and the feathers and the feet, we I use everything. Waste the rest of it, yeah. Right. But people have accused me and asked me, I haven't had red paint thrown on my tent yet, fingers crossed. But people have asked me if I raise quail just to their feet, really? Wow, yeah, for real. And I think part of I it mean, is the area in which I am, people are so city that some of it is just so foreign. They're like, I, I don't understand. So I'm usually really polite about how I answer it because I don't want to discourage anybody. And what you right. don't know, you don't know. But like, right. if you come at me sideways, like, <laughs> I am definitely going to make a very sarcastic video. Absolutely, you will. Absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, but I, I, I was really polite and I didn't say everything I was thinking because I don't want to like discourage people and think that there's no dumb questions. I think sometimes people should think before they ask right. certain questions about maybe how it's going to reflect on them. But <laughs> yeah, it's a waste of your birds if you're just growing them for the feet. Like I know. I'm like, well, in that case, I don't need as many buttons as I have. I could just have their feet these too, but they kind of need those. So you just need them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. no. I get it. I think it's because we live in a hunting community. Nobody's ever asked me that question. Yeah. And it depends yeah. what types of people I'm dealing with. If I'm at like a bougie type farmer's market, like the city I'm in tends to be more bougie type people mm -hmm. that are just uh, oblivious. So I'm going to get more questions like that. Right. But I also get a lot of people wrong that go, with the question, you know. But... No. Sometimes there's a, how you phrase it. <laughs> or the look on your face when you ask it <laughs> but oh goodness yeah I, you but, don't know what you don't know and if you don't ask yeah. you're not learn so if if you ask i do educate ask. people whether they ask rude or not i do educate right. them um <laughs> but yeah yeah well i think we covered all the questions is there anything else you want to let us know anything else you want to touch upon Anything to add before we get going? People should go to Quail University. I do like it seriously though, because like as far as like what I was talking about with my husband, where is like um if you don't know, like I can't remember what that question was, but it was like get on YouTube and know the basics before you right. start with anything. 
a lot of people make the misconception that quail are chickens. Like all birds are the same, but they're mm -hmm. really, really not. My button right. quail raising experience has been so totally different from my Caternix quail experience and raising chickens is a whole nother pain in the butt that is just totally different. Um, right. So I think like doing your YouTube research and like luckily for us, we have Quail U. It's super cheap. It's got great information. They're constantly adding new courses. The more you know, the better you're going to be because you're going right. to fail less at things you can already do the research on. And then you fail on something else and you're like, oh, and you can customize it to your own experience. Like the way I raise quail is totally different than how you guys do in Louisiana because right. the climate right. is totally different. The rules mm -hmm. are very strict. <laughs> and right. so you have to kind of yeah, work definitely with put what in you can. Be as yeah. prepared as you can for the situation you're in. So right. smart. Yeah. Well, it was very fun talking to you today. You I'm too. I'm so glad we had a chance. Um, and I will I'll probably message you after. So okay. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.